Does everyone in Arkansas shop at Walmart? Did Bill Clinton ruin Arkansas's economy? No. And does Arkansas have some of the prettiest countryside in the South? Now we're gonna answer those questions and a whole lot more. So get your buggies out. We're gonna unbox the state of Walmart, also known as the state of Arkansas. Okay, here we go. We're at the best place in the world for retail shopping, where you can get practically anything you want, where you can get into a fight over a flat screen and see people shooting up in the bathroom, where you can park your RV for a week and nobody will care, where you can get a job at 70 and earn lousy wages, where there aren't any real cashiers anymore, where you can get a whole outfit for church for 30 bucks. Of course, we're at Walmart. Now, Walmart's the butt of many jokes, and it doesn't have the reputation as being a very glamorous place to shop, but it's cheap and convenient, and 95% of Americans spent money here at some point last year, and you were probably here sometime in the last week. More people spend money at Walmart than any other place where you can spend money. So, say what you want about Walmart, but it's definitely a big part of the U.S. culture. We're here at Walmart because we're in Arkansas. And Arkansas is where the first ever Walmart was opened, way back in 1962. But as you may be aware, Walmart has a bad side. Many Walmart employees make up the bulk of the Arkansas welfare rolls, as many of its workers are among the ranks of the Arkansas working poor. They don't pay people very much. And Walmart's dominance here in Arkansas has meant tens of thousands of lost jobs from smaller retail locations, which just can't compete with the global giant. Many areas of Arkansas have a frail economy, and there's parts of the state you would never want to live in. If you're deciding to move to Arkansas, or just want to know more about this state, you want to know where the good areas are, where the bad areas are, and where all the rednecks live. This is Arkansas. Now you could split this state up into a few different ways, but there's no way better than like this. There's one part of Arkansas that's doing very, very well, but most of the state's challenged in ways that I'm pretty sure you've heard about before like up here, where we'll begin, up in northeast Arkansas. So the whole eastern third of Arkansas is dominated by what's called the Mississippi Delta, a region along the Mississippi River that's been a really great place to grow crops. The soil here along the Mississippi is very fertile, and the land here is very flat. This side of the state's very poor, and it's also very rural, and it's pretty sad actually. There aren't a lot of good jobs on this side of the state, and there really is no reason why you would ever want to move to eastern Arkansas. This is also the only part of the state that votes Democrat, so you wouldn't want to live here for that reason, too. The eastern side can be divided in half, with the upper delta and the lower delta region. The upper delta region is far more populated and far more dangerous. A lot of the upper delta of Arkansas has some of the most dangerous and run-down parts of the whole state. A lot of what makes up the eastern half of this state are just large stretches of farmland, typically soybeans, rice, and cotton. In fact, there's a pretty good chance when you eat rice, it came from Arkansas rice patties like this. Before we get to the bad places to live and talk about depressing stuff, let's briefly mention a sort of highlight on this side of the state. Batesville, here in Independence County, isn't too bad a place to live. It's sort of safe and far less run down than many other areas of the upper delta. The population here is only about 10,000 people and there isn't much to do, but it has a nice small town feel to it. For perspective, homes here average about $107,000, which is pretty much as low as you're going to find in any small town in America. We're going to see this statewide. If Arkansas has one thing going for it, it sure is cheap, pal. That's pretty much it on the nice places to live on this side of the state. Sure, there's going to be small places like Batesville where you're not going to get shot or robbed, which are also kind of tucked out of the way, but they're too little for a mention. Arkansas is the fourth most dangerous state of all when you measure property and violent crimes per capita. And much of that's because of this part of the state. Now we're going to go through about a half dozen such places in the upper delta and briefly mention them. But we won't stay too long. Because, you know, you're wanting to know the places in the state where you can actually live are. Jonesboro is perhaps the best of the worst in northeast Arkansas. It's a college town home to Arkansas State University. Yes, there is an Arkansas State University. They're in the Sun Belt Conference and there's 9,000 students here. Jonesboro is kind of small with 76,000 people. It's actually growing here. Being a college town, you're going to find some culture and things to do. But Jonesboro is also 7th in the state for murders per capita. And crime here is going up. 
There's a lot of meth abuse here, as there is statewide, something we'll talk about later. A home here is about 163 k which is still pretty cheap. Overall, Jonesboro isn't terrible when you compare it to other places in this part of the state. You know, places like West Memphis. This place has 25,000 people and going down. It's like Memphis, but a much smaller version. Here you have a 1 in 50 chance of getting attacked or robbed every year. 1 in 50. That's like somebody on every block. 10% of the population hasn't worked a day in their lives. If you're curious, homes here are about 80k on average, but they're that dirt cheap for a reason. There's a dog racing track here, so if you're into that, you'd be entertained, I guess, but just don't move to West Memphis. We may never hear from you again. The West Memphis suburb of Marion's a much better option, but then again, why are you moving to this part of the state anyways? Similarly terrible is nearby Blytheville, population 14,000 and dropping. Not just because of all the murders, people are just leaving. Statewide, Arkansas is it's hanging on with our population growth. The number of people who live here kind of ticks up every year, but not in this part of the state. Nuh uh. A lot of the little towns on this side of the state are the worst in Arkansas for crime and poverty. Examples are Little Newport here and Osceola over here along the river. Both are small towns of 7,000 people that are really run down and bad for crime. Places where two year olds get shot for no damn reason. Helena, West Helena has 10,000 people, and folks are leaving here in droves too. This is just about the worst place to live in the whole state. One in five people drops out of high school here, and crime is just out of control. It's just so depressing in so many areas of Northeast Arkansas. Now it's sort of better, a teeny bit, in the lower Arkansas Delta region down here. Southeast Arkansas is also very rural. It's safer than the Northeast part of the state, but it's also much poorer too. A lot of the area down here is just small farm towns holding on. Seems like everyone but the farmers and sharecroppers left this region a long time ago. It's slow and quiet and can be peaceful if hardly anyone around is peaceful. A lot of people down here shoot at ducks and stick a pole in the water. Back in the day, Arkansas's Delta region was booming. I mean, in the Civil War days, this part of the South was considered the deepest of the Deep South. And this was a wealthy region with all the cotton production going on. But modern mechanization and corporate farming have turned much of this side of the state into dying small towns. You know how the Midwest has the rust belt with all those depressing small towns? Well, this is the rot belt. It's the same thing, but in the south. This is where you'd find a lot of trailer parks and meth use. Those two Arkansas stereotypes definitely hold true in the southern part of the state. The state ranks ninth in the nation for number of trailer parks per capita. And one report that just came out said Arkansas leads the nation for meth use. One study said 28% of everybody tested in Arkansas tested positive for meth. Can you believe that? 28%? That's just unbelievable. Put the pipes down and get a job. But if Arkansas wants to live their life like that, they're going to have to live with the stigma. Other stereotypes are Arkansas folks are poor, overweight rednecks. Well, they certainly are poor. More than 16% of this state lives in poverty, putting it at the fourth poorest of all. That's not good. Arkansas is the fourth most dangerous and the fourth poorest. But it's sad. One in four kids here is food insecure, and they really are unhealthy as a state. This is the third fattest state, where nearly 4 in 10 residents are obese. I mean, they'll eat anything fried down here, and most of their diet consists of catfish, BBQ, beef, pork, sweet tea, salt and pepper, ketchup, and ranch. Arkansas ranks 11th in the country for number of single moms at home at 8%. And in terms of the whole redneck stereotype thing, yeah, this state is plum full of rednecks. Even Wikipedia acknowledges this stereotype, saying many Arkansans are known for being lazy, rural, poor, banjo playing, racist cousin marrying Hicks. Damn, Wikipedia! That's so mean. But you could find a ton of people here living that stereotypical redneck lifestyle, I'll tell you that. Of course, you're going to have a lot of people in Arkansas who will defend their state and say, Stereotypes aren't true, especially in certain areas of the state, but you will find way more people here who will agree with the stereotypes and say, yes, we are like that and we're proud of it. By the way, if you don't like it, then good, stay out. We're just fine the way we are. We don't want any West Coast or Northeast liberals moving down here and ruining the damn place. Good for you, Arkansas. It's kind of hard to get rid of the modern Arkansas stereotype since you don't hear a lot of differing views coming out of this state. There aren't really any major cities here. Most people who visit the state are either coming down to hunt or visit the mountains, so there's not a lot of first-person knowledge of the natural state. It's going to just be viewed as a rustic, backwoods region out of touch with mainstream America. 
However, there's two things that are interesting about Arkansas worth discussing. Arkansans aren't necessarily dumb, nor are they unhappy. There isn't a single ranking online that shows Arkansas in the bottom 10 for intelligence. So that's a bright spot. And I recently published a video that cited many statistics and polls, which show Arkansas is the 10th happiest state in the country, too. If you're thinking about moving to Arkansas, know that the weather here is miserably hot and humid for five months of the year, but autumns are very nice and pretty. They get some snow every year, and tornadoes are a big deal. Most people here have tornado shelters, or Brady Holes, as they call them down here. This part of the state's had a huge impact on the music culture in America, especially when it comes to blues and gospel music. Down here is Kingsland, home to Johnny Cash. He was really rich, but just about everybody else down in southeast Arkansas is going to be poor. They're going to live in a small town of less than 10,000 people. Monticello is the only real hub down here. It's a small college town. I guess you could move there. Over here is Tutgard, which many call the duck hunting capital of the world. I cannot overestimate how important hunting and the outdoors are for Arkies. They love them a good hunt, and they're really good people. Some of the best hunting and outdoors is in the south, down here in Arkansas, I'll tell you. Over here is El Dorado, population 17,000. It's really a bad place to live for crime and poverty and drug use, once again. This is also kind of the dividing line between the southeast and southwest part of the state. This side of the state's really quite different when it comes to terrain. The eastern side's very flat and doesn't have any trees. But western Arkansas is very hilly and has a ton of expanses of forest. It's really pretty over here on this side of the state, and folks come from all around to see Arkansas's forests and mountains. Sure, there's a lot of smaller farm towns on this side of the state, and many of the areas here are also going to be very small and very poor. But these places are less farming towns, and they're just towns. The Wachita Mountains and National Forest are in this region of the state. This is a great place for hiking, camping, hunting, and everything else you can do in the mountains down here. This is actually the oldest national forest in the south. There's a lot of lumber mills around the area, too. A lot of people rave about hot springs located in the middle of this national forest. That's because, well, there are natural hot springs here. It's more of a tourist draw. But there's also a horse track and a casino here. 39,000 people make this home, and it's one of a few places in rural Arkansas with a growing population. It's actually really pretty here. There's a ton of outdoor stuff around, but because it's a tourist draw, crime rates are high. In fact, Hot Springs has one of the highest property crime rates in the state. But if a mountain town in Arkansas is your thing, home prices are only 230 k A lot of people who live here say they like it, despite the growing crime numbers. Texarkana is down here along the Texas state line. There's actually two Texarkanas. The Texas one is way better. The Arkansas one has 30,000 people, and it's kind of dangerous, mostly inexpensive and really boring. There's a lot of drug use here, but the Mexican food's good. You probably wouldn't enjoy it for your new home. Hope, Arkansas is here, another smallish place kind of tucked among farmland in between the forest. This place really isn't much to look at, and it's very poor and certainly not very exciting, but it is notable as being the birthplace of former Arkansas governors Mike Huckabee and Bill Clinton. Of course, Mike Huckabee tried to get the Republican nomination for president in 2016, but Bill Clinton was president twice. Bill Clinton grew up here in small town Arkansas, then he ran off to law school on the East Coast, where he met and married his wife, Hillary. Then the two returned to Arkansas, and he became governor in 1983. He had a good run at it, and was then elected to president. Many say Clinton used the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, to open up trade in the Americas, and as a result, his own home state of Arkansas lost a bunch of jobs. Some say the beginning of Arkansas's economic slide began with NAFTA, and Clinton's policies here began a process that would help ruin his own home state's economy, and that is not good. His presidency was marred by scandals, and his wife wasn't liked by a lot of people, but looking back, he did leave with the highest approval rating in like 60 years, and a lot of people say he did a good job. So there's hope, people of Arkansas. Maybe one day you can rise to fame and wealth, too. And there's also hope you can get rich without becoming president. That's because Arkansas is home to Crater of the Diamond State Park here in Pike County, only 30 miles from where Bill Clinton grew up. This is the only place in the world where diamonds are found in their original volcanic environment outside of South Africa. And this is why the state flag has a diamond on it. This mine doesn't produce very many of the world's diamonds, but it does produce some of them. 
It's a major tourist draw, and people from all over come here to look for diamonds. Sometimes they find them, and if you do, you get to keep them. Every now and then, somebody finds one worth more than $100,000. Hey, that'll buy you a house in West Memphis. Of course, you're going to find lots of churches in this part of Arkansas. This is the fifth most religious state of all. And most folks are Baptists and Protestants. Now, religion and politics are supposed to be separate in this country, but it's kind of a gray line here in Arkansas. About half the state's counties here are dry, meaning you can't buy booze. And on Sundays, you can't buy booze anywhere in the state. Lots of other stuff is closed on Sundays here, too. And look at that welcome sign when you come to this state. They ain't messing around when it comes to abortion. And there's all sorts of other laws here. You know, there's one about limiting medical treatment options for transgender kids. And there's one that outlaws the teaching of critical race theory in favor of teaching creationism. So if you lead an alternative lifestyle or you're a minority, you may not feel at home in many parts of Arkansas. That's just how it is. If you moved here and you aren't a church goer, your new neighbors will likely invite you to church. They'll invite you to church a lot and they'll keep inviting you to church. And if you don't go with them, they'll pray for you until you do. Or they'll just keep inviting you until you finally break down. Okay, so enough of the negative stuff, right? I mean, Arkansas can't be all bad, can it? Well, before we get to more of the state's woes, we should talk about the fastest growing, most economically exciting part of this whole state. This is Northwest Arkansas. This is way different than the rest of the state. And this is likely where you'd move if you made the natural state your new home. Now, if the rest of Arkansas seems very Southern, Northwest Arkansas seems more Midwestern. Believe it or don't, this region was the 13th fastest growing metro area in the country over the last decade. There's lots of jobs here. There's a ton of new companies moving in and new suburbs are popping up all over. This is where the middle and upper class live in the state and where crime is super low when you compare it to everywhere else. Northwest Arkansas is where Arkansas stereotypes go to die and where kids drive really expensive redneck pickup trucks to school. This whole region has a lot of great white and blue collar jobs. There are six Fortune 500 companies located here, everything from retail to energy and transportation to food. I mean, a reputable news source called Northwest Arkansas the fourth best place to live in the nation once. And hey, they'll even pay you 10 grand to move there. So get in on that, people. Of course, Northwest Arkansas is not going to have the diversity or the culture that many other major metros have, and you won't see any tall, gleaming skyscrapers. It isn't hustle and bustle here. That's why it's a good place to live. You can really kind of pick anywhere along the I-49 corridor and be fine up here. Bella Vista has a bunch of nice homes and lots of places to be near nature. There's not a lot of nightlife, but it's only 20 minutes away, and homes are only 230 k everyone. Down the road's Bentonville, which is well known as being the headquarters of Walmart. Homes here are $400,000. That's a lot for Arkansas. Bentonville also has the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, funded by Walmart money. Walmart's presence is all over the state, and they give away a lot of money. I mean, they pay for the Walmart School of Business here in the region. And Arkansas people definitely return the favor. There's 132 Walmarts in this state, and Arkansans spend the third most per capita at Walmart every single year. The average Arkansas resident spends more than $116 a month at Walmart. If you're curious, Oklahoma and South Dakota spend more per year per capita. Some say the Walmarts in Northwest Arkansas are the nicest Walmarts in the country, and people here aren't ashamed to shop at them. Who would ever be ashamed to shop at Walmart? Nearby Rogers is also nice. It's more affordable than Bentonville, where homes are about 250 k Down here is Fayetteville, where homes are also pricey for the state at close to $300,000. Now, Fayetteville is where the University of Arkansas is. There's a lot of smart people who graduate here, and this place is a big deal in these parts. You know, since Arkansas doesn't have a professional sports team of their own. The U of A is really good at baseball and other sports. They're decent at basketball, but they're not very good at football right now. No matter... Their fans are rabid, and if you moved here, you'd have to learn how to do the Arkansas hog call all game long. <laughs> Fateville is just about as close to a hipster enclave as you'll find in this whole state, and it's a college town, so there's a ton of stuff to do here. Springdale might be the only sort of not nice place up here. There's some corporate chicken plants in the area, and so there's a lot of immigrants here, and parts of town are run down, and crime is higher than most other places in the area. 
drug use and gangs are also around here too. Now way over here is Eureka Springs. It's a neat little town of 2,000 people and many are hippies. It's more of a tourist town modeled after a Victoria era Swiss village. Really neat place. Way out here in Boone County is Harrison, which is the headquarters of the KKK. There's always some controversy going on up here. We'll just move on and leave it at that. Now south of the metro area, you have the Ozark Mountains. There's tons of outdoor stuff out this way too. Supposedly the Clampets from the Beverly Hillbillies from this part of the state. Remember that show? Jethro fetching my stove so, so I can get some vittles to cook. Oh, you have a beautiful stove. Thank you. Fetch it in, Jed. You scare up some wood, Ellie. No, no, I mean you have a stove already installed in the kitchen. Where's that? And sure. that certainly didn't help change Arkansas stereotypes very much, I'd say, huh? And then we have Fort Smith here along the Oklahoma state line, which is also a bad place to live. There's 90,000 people here and citywide you can get a house for about 129k, but the north end of town sketch and there's drugs and crime all over and it's getting worse all the time. Welcome to what the rest of America is going through, Fort Smith. Then you have the Arkansas River Valley that flows from Fort Smith and sort of separates the Ozarks from the Wachita Mountains and flows directly into the last region of our state, the center of it all. There's three main places to note here in central Arkansas. We'll begin with the best. Conway here in Faulkner County is actually a pretty nice place to live. There's about 65,000 people here and it's growing. If you needed to work at the state capital of Little Rock, this is probably the best choice since there's actually a lot to do in the area. A home here is only 181 k making this like the best bang for your buck. It's way better than nearby Moralton, which is filled with drugs and criminals. But sadly, if you move to Conway for work, you'd likely have to commute into Little Rock. For a state capital, this place is really depressing. There's 200,000 people in Little Rock, and it's not grown at all. You could live here for like 161 k but crime is just outright terrible here. Like for every year you lived here, you'd have a 1 in 10 chance of being a victim of some sort. We don't need to go over all the stats. This is just one of the worst places you can live in the country. It's terrible here. There's gangs and drugs and poverty and desperation. There's going to be plenty of jobs in the area, but if you're not 25 and looking to party, you're going to want to live in a nearby suburb. Pine Bluff, down here in Jefferson County, is even worse than Little Rock, if you can believe that. They call it Crime Bluff. It's basically the worst place you can live in the whole state one of the worst places you can live in the country. You want to know how bad it is in Pine Bluff? A home here is $50,000. At one point a few years back, Pine Bluff was second only to Detroit for violent crimes. There's very few bars or restaurants here. A lot of shops and movie theaters shut down. The mall sucks. There's nine prisons and 90 churches in town. The kids that actually do graduate from Pine Bluff schools, they can't even fill out a job application correctly. Who's going to hire them? The east side of town's filled with drug dealers and gangs. It's sad that a place like this can exist in America, but here you go. One resident called Pine Bluff a land of emptiness covered in graffiti and crime. This college kid who lives in Pine Bluff says, If I had three wishes, I'd ask for three more wishes and then use all three wishes to get away from Pine Bluff forever. It's really sad in Pine Bluff because it used to be a great place, but not many people have the energy to fix this town up anymore. As Arkansas tries to improve the areas it can improve, it continues to battle the stereotypes that have defined it for a generation now. And sure, a lot of those stereotypes do exist here, but poor, uneducated, unhealthy people are in every community and every state. But changing people's perceptions means you have to have a new identity. And Arkansas is kind of a mutt state. There's not really any Arkansas music or Arkansas food or Arkansas destinations or Arkansas big cities. For the most part, it's just a hybrid of many nearby states. They're making progress here. The state's public schools are improving in many areas, so that's good. And another good sign is the migration rate for Arkansas is low, meaning a lot of folks aren't moving away to find a better life. They're sticking around. Folks in Arkansas will tell you they live in the prettiest state of all. They'll tell you that their state's filled with solid, honest folks, and they'll point to the improvements they're making in job growth. But they don't want to correct you too much if you assume this is a backwards, simple place, unworthy of your attention. Because that helps keep the riffraff out. They kind of like it the way it is down here. They don't want you to come down here and change it. Well, that was pretty cool. We learned a lot about Arkansas, didn't we? 
There's a lot of stereotypes in this state, but there's a lot of other stuff going on here too. Good Lord, this is a beautiful state. We could have talked for another hour about Arkansas with all the small towns and the history and all the other nature stuff to explore, but we gotta go. Not because Walmart's about to close, they never close. Because it's morning time and I ain't had a beer yet. Now here's a good song about Arkansas. Father, what have you made me done? You got me living in a cabin and no internet, how is this fun? Mother, why'd you make me wear this stuff? We're eating possum armadillo with some squirrels too and even a skunk. Living up the dream at the mark. You know I'm gonna fill that car Cause that's what the family do When we live in a state like you It's Arkansas It's such a redneck place It's Arkansas They're a different race Mega hats No Democrats Mullet hair They don't care They just want you to leave them With their prayers Living up the dream at the mark You know I'm gonna fill that car Cause that's what the family do When we live in a state like you Living on another dime Making my check go tight Cause that's what I have to do When I live in a state like you Okay, so I was a bit hard on Arkansas But they're a great state And most people here are super awesome And kind and generous Everyone I interviewed for this video is a good, kind human being. You'll see that soon when the interviews at the end start. But ultimately, it comes down to brain drain. If you grew up in Arkansas and left for success and want to come back home to a more simple life, they sure need you. Come back to Arkansas where you belong. You've been missed here and I'm sure there's a part of you that wants to come back home forever. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! you should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. Yeah, well, we, you know, ours kind of went downhill. Can I say Clinton era? Clinton yeah. era? Maybe after that, we started kind of on a downhill slide. Um, uh, commerce left, a lot of jobs left, just like everybody else. You know, uh, they went out of country, um, lost a lot of jobs. In comes the meth and the drugs and the oxys and the stuff and you know, that's killed not just Arkansas, but everywhere. I know. What was it about the Clinton era? Like, what, what went on back then in the late 90s, that you yeah. think? <laughs> well, there's, you know, actually, he was, he was a pretty good governor because he was a governor and then he was a senator and then he was a governor again. Um, but... It ended up being a lot of shady stuff, uh, some bad real estate deals. His uh, brother Roger was getting into, tr starting to get into trouble, uh, things like that. And uh, there are some still some crazy stories uh, that go around. Whether there, any of them are true or not, who knows? But um, yeah, pretty, pretty crazy stuff but that's that's the time when a lot of the the deals were struck um when 
Clinton got to be president and businesses started moving out of the country and everything. And it kind of started in Arkansas because that's where he was. So, I mean, it looked good on paper and sounded good at the time. Um, but we lost all of our jobs, you know. We're so. talking about like NAFTA? Yes, yes. Okay. You know, and I mean, it was kind of like, I don't know, Arkansas was maybe experimental ground because he was governor there and uh, kind of trying it on some of the businesses that were here. Uh, Westinghouse uh, was one of them that uh, went out of the country very early. They were up in northern Arkansas. Um, who else? some of the smaller ones I don't even remember the names of them we had some you know shoe factories um, some of the processing even over uh, in our Stuttgart area that processed rice and made oil from rice there was a company over there called Chefway at one time I don't even think they're over there anymore um, but uh that that seemed to kind of be the start of our our slide, and I talked to a, a couple of coworkers today about what went wrong with Pine Bluff. I grew up here. I've lived in a few other places, but uh, yeah, it has a really bad reputation. The um, population is probably half of what it was has you know probably half in the last i don't know 40 years or something it was a nice place to live people wanted to live here uh, but uh you know we had some really big businesses like the international paper company uh, and we that live here are used to the smell visitors uh, can smell it from miles out. I just tell people it smells like money, you know, <laughs> so uh, that's still one of the big businesses here, uh, one of the largest employers, but uh, other than that, there's not much. So Arkansas was doing pretty good up until the mid nineties with manufacturing, a lot of blue collar jobs. And then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they all started to kind of go away overseas and that started Arkansas's downfall. Right. A lot of it, uh, you know, I think Westinghouse, if I remember right, went to Mexico. We had several that went uh, to Mexico, and I think that was something that was orchestrated during that Clinton governorship era. Mm -hmm. Let me, oops, hang on. Sorry about that. I, I think it's Roger on. Clinton is trying to get a hold of you. <laughs> Probably. He's, he's like, what are you talking about there? Look. It's not Hillary calling. <laughs> She's like, hey, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, that's that was uh, all that was bad. Um, you know, sad situation. Mm -hmm. um, the boys on the tracks, of course, that was a bad deal. Um, I don't know how much you've heard about that. Um, the what now? The boys on the track. It's called the boys on the tracks. Um, supposedly it was, uh, one of the drug drops gone wrong and, um, two teenage boys ended up, uh, dead, uh, unfortunately. And that has rocked on unsolved for literally since then, since the nineties mm -hmm. and, uh, very sad. Um. Two young boys from a small town, wrong place, wrong time kind of thing, you know. So what was Pine, you're, you live in Pine Bluff? I live just outside of Pine Bluff, yes. Mm -hmm. I so, grew up in town. Uh, used to be a nice place, little tree-lined streets and, you know, nice neighborhoods. There were some more affluent than others, of course, but uh, it was a... Nice place to grow up. Uh, Arkansas as a whole was a nice place to grow up. And I don't mind being in Arkansas. I really don't. Um, it's beautiful. 
there, there are beautiful places, the Glory Hole uh, at Ozone. Uh, every, that's should be a bucket list thing. If you haven't gone there, uh, the lakes and hot springs, uh, there's areas over there that are beautiful. Uh, Petty Jean Mountain uh, is one of my favorite places. I love to go there. Uh, but uh, Palm Bluff has... Uh, it's gotten rough and uh, honestly since um, <laughs> and this is going to sound crazy since everyone has worn masks for COVID it's almost made it very uncomfortable to go anywhere because you can't see anyone so you've got all the people with the hoodies and the hats and the mask and everything and all you see is is this and lots of places I don't go and I've lived here my entire life so you know not sure what happened except like I said no jobs when jobs okay. have come in they've had the problem of high absenteeism can't pass the drug test uh theft um on and on same problems uh that i've heard in missouri uh, that i heard the gentleman talking about missouri no, missouri no opportunities uh very little opportunities and as our kids uh, graduate high school our grandkids now graduate high school they're gone and they don't come back uh my grandson just graduated high school he's on his way to new york uh, to go to college there says he's never coming back i hate it, it breaks my heart so, so what's it, what's it going to take just jobs trying to turn that all around again probably jobs opportunities the i mean i'm not going to say there's no jobs but they're all they seem to be low-paying jobs um not uh, not a lot of tech all the tech stuff is in northern arkansas uh now up around uh bentonville fayetteville uh, all of those little towns have just kind of grown together because of walmart um a lot of kind of artsy districts up there um, in that area and you know that's a booming area while the rest of the state is just struggling so and that grows by leaps and bounds there and another city that's growing and doing really well is conway which is um i don't know about a half an hour 30 miles, 35 miles north of Little Rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a college town. There's like three colleges. And uh, they're doing great. Lots of new building, lots of new jobs. Um, a lot of tech and stuff. It's all tech. It has. To, it keep, means that when the tech moves in, the people move in. Yeah. And that's just something that has not moved into this area. We end up with things like a Tyson chicken plant that makes chicken nuggets for McDonald's. You know, who wants to kill chickens for a living? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what it is. So. Do people in Arkansas hold Bill Clinton responsible for the state's the begin of the slide are there people that are angry about what he did to your state no i don't think so i i think it's it's more of a you know people will tell me that's my opinion well it's yes it's my opinion but i mean if you do the research and do the math that's when it all started kind of sliding um I'm not even sure I necessarily blame Bill Clinton because we've got representatives just like everybody else. They just, you know, like I said, it looked good on paper at the time, sounded good, looked good. Uh, it, it just, it just wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the right thing to do. Wasn't the right thing to do. And I mean, when 
they say, look at all this money you can make if, if the labor is cheaper. So that, let's send it to Mexico. Your labor will be cheaper. Product will come back, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but for a while, maybe. But, you know, and that's that's what, you know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once it's gone and they have cheaper labor, they're not going to bring it back to to people to make the decent wages again. It's not that's not going to happen. It would, you know, take a take a miracle, I guess. Is that, wasn't Trump trying to do that? Bring jobs back? He was that. trying to bring some jobs back. And of course, um, we were affected by um, uh, the pipeline and everything that was shut down uh, because Arkansas was one of the areas of fracking and um, lost a lot of jobs there. Um, I, I, I don't. I don't know much about yeah. fracking and everything, uh, whether it's good, whether it's bad. It, again, it, it just depends on who you talk to. It's good for the people making the money. But uh, as far as how it is for the environment or anything, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. But regardless, we were affected by that. A lot of jobs lost there. And that's just been very recent. Uh, Pine Bluffs, of course, the pipeline wasn't in Pine Bluff or anything, but Pine Bluffs unemployment rate is like 13 or 14 percent, which is pretty high. Um, I'm starting to notice some signs around town now that some of our restrictions have lifted, uh, help wanted, but... Um, it also helped when uh, our governor, Bibi, um, rejected, uh, they no longer get the additional uh, unemployment payment in Arkansas. Yeah, we're having that tr problem here. A lot of places couldn't open up because everyone was <laughs> sitting on their stimulus money for way too long <laughs> right get a job people get back right. out there right? it's, it's like get a job and get back to work and everything but now everybody's just sitting around going come on grease my palm and mm -hmm. <laughs> and not still not doing anything so but again around here it's all low paying jobs it's it's your dollar stores that are on every corner and the fast food and things like that because that's about all there is. Yeah. So, you know, and we talked about how Main Street used to be a beautiful place. And we have a, um, a group, Go Forward Palm Bluff, that's trying to revitalize Main Street and bring in some things and everything. And there's a very small portion that's been, been redone, but... Main Street died when a shopping center went in. The shopping center died when the mall went in. Now the mall is sitting over there empty. Um, so there's nothing left. Um, there is, is a casino that has gone in. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, they've got a, a, a big building project. And if, if they do what they say they're going to do, we'll have a 13 story um, hotel and casino and I don't know how many restaurants and stages and all that stuff like that but I can't see that being a real good thing I, I, I don't know I'm not a casino person you know I just I just don't I don't do that so never been you'll to get, it, you know. yeah you'll get you'll get tourists coming in it'll it'll stimulate a little bit of stuff but the problem is most of the people that are going to end up there are going to be the people that shouldn't be there they can't afford to be there from the local community that are going to be spending their paychecks and all their welfare money at the casino that's or right. whatever they're doing and the, that's their right. kid, kids are going to be at home hungry and unguided 
Yeah, well, they, uh, there were, there had guy. been some uh, uh, businesses and some groups of people that had bought some property along a, a street that was in awful repair that had some hotels that need to be raised. And they had plans to to bring it all back to life and to fix these little strip malls and shopping centers and put in some businesses and everything. And a few things went in and they've already gone belly up because they said there's no business because everybody's spending their money at the casino. And it's just, I mean, you can see it from that street and it's nothing, you know, nothing. So I, I don't know what it's going to take. Um, uh, Palm Bluff's crime rate is surprisingly when I looked it up right now, right this minute, we're not even in the top 10 in Palm Bluff in Arkansas hmm. for high crime, which kind of shocked me. Um, Where did you look that up? Because um, sometimes um, the one with the snacks, the snack ability yeah. thing. Yeah. Home snacks. I don't know. That's my website. So the problem Is with that uh, yours? <laughs> yeah, well, so it might be, <laughs> they um, they don't report a lot of times. Um, the police will stop reporting for a year or two because it's so bad that they just yes. don't report. Mm -hmm. They don't turn their paperwork into the FBI at the end of the year, so they're not counted. So I'm sure that's, that's what happened because Durham, is, North Carolina, used to do that too. That's probably it. It. You know, at one time, um, when I was younger, Pine Bluff was called Little Chicago because we had a higher crime rate per capita than Chicago. That's bad. That's, I mean, come on. I mean, is it is it like... Property crimes, like people are stealing cars, or is it like just straight up? Is it beef between the local drug dealers that get into little gunfights, or are they going into people's there's, homes? And there's I mean, some gunfights going on. There's a lot of B and A, um, B and E, breaking in. Oh, breaking in. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Um, just you know, robberies. Um, they've already had the casino hadn't even been open a year yet. And there was a shooting there just because someone was mad because they were escorted out, you know, um, go figure. I don't know. Um, it, you know, there's, there's shootings. The teenagers have raised themselves. Um, children are raising themselves parents or i don't know where they are i i really don't um they're not where they're supposed to be and i you know that's all i can say they're just not where they're supposed to be um, I don't know if the statistics are still that Jefferson County is the most illiterate county. It was at one time. It also had the highest teen pregnancy rate at one time. We've had a, a lot of milestones through the years of things like that. And I hope that it's things that have all turned around because I like to put blinders on when I start hearing these things. Um, it's, it's just when you live here as long as I have, it's, it's almost too much to bear. Um, when you see it just, Go and and if you go to city council meetings and things like that, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't, you know. Because again, there you get into the the cliques and the groups and the politics of it all, and 
you know. But you're sticking around. You're you're not you're not leaving. Why is that? Uh I actually I was living in another place. I had moved to Texarkana. Um lived in Malvern area for several years, actually a little place called Glen Rose um, for several years. And due to some unfortunate circumstances, I moved to Texarkana for a couple of years, uh, moved to a little tiny place called Taylor, Arkansas, that has 450 people uh, <laughs> in it. Uh, just a little tiny place right on the southern border of Louisiana. Uh, lived there for about a year, and I moved back here because of uh, aging mom. And uh, that was, I don't know, 10 years ago. Uh, she passed at 99. Uh, last year. So um, I'm still here. I'm kind of waiting at this point on retirement. And my husband is retired, but he still works uh, as a truck driving instructor. Um, I work uh, with developmentally disabled adults. And I love what I do. Uh, that's my bright spot. So uh, yeah. Unlike a lot of the troubled youth, they probably take direction. <laughs> this is true. Uh, kids think they know everything there is to know about everything. Right now, one of the problems they're having with the teens is uh, racing, car racing, and doing the little donuts and stuff like that and they meet uh in literally in the middle of the night hmm. and do all this stuff and it's like how do people get the money for these kids to have cars like this i have no clue uh, you know I, I don't know you see the fancy nails and the fancy hair and the fancy cars and the ebt cards yeah <laughs> and that is baffling to me. It's just baffling. And the help wanted signs and I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Uh, so like, what do you tell young kids that grow up? in the area if you get a chance to give them a little bit of wisdom there in your little neck of the woods in arkansas what would you tell them or what do you tell them about the future of arkansas and what they can try to do to make that place better well the you know i i've told my grandson he's uh, going away to college i said i wish you would come back and bring his smarts back bring his wisdom back and bring an army with him, bring his friends with him and, and do something. Um, bring the tech back because that's uh, an area that he's kind of getting into. And um, if someone would do that, bring some kind of tech company in, maybe that would that would help. I don't. I don't know if it would or not. Um, the closest thing they've had is, I think they had tr tried to have one of the call center things, that didn't work. Uh, calling calling people to try to get them to move. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They may have been selling the tire warranties. Who knows? Or the car warranties. They may have been those worrisome people. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant they were calling people like call center like will you please come to arkansas no mm -mm. oh they should do they, you know, I mean uh, fayetteville area though i believe it was uh the waltons had something to do with um giving people ten thousand oh, dollars oh yeah up there. Mm -hmm. yeah they're still doing that and okay. they don't need they got plenty of good minds up in fayetteville they need to get people down and 
I wish Central that, you know, uh, you know, from, from our area, uh, it's, it's a lot of farming area. Yeah. Uh, Stuttgart is very close, the duck capital of the world where they have duck calling competitions and, uh, that's where all the rice and everything is grown over there. And there's, uh, Riceland is over there and it's literally shipped all over the world. That's one of the few still thriving businesses. Um, there used to be a lot of uh, cotton and soybeans grown down south from Little Rock down. It's just flat. Lots of trees, but it's it's far. It's the flat farmland, you know, the Delta region. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially that that uh, whole southeast corner. And uh, Pine Bluff is just on the edge of it. Well, I hope you guys can. It's going to take a lot of heavy lifting to get you guys to start going in the right direction. You know what I mean? It is. I'll um, make my play. Hey, if somebody can fix it, y'all come on. You know, uh, I make good cornbread. Come on. <laughs> come on with it. That, that's I'll funny. because down in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll put you up for a while. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, yeah, because that's, that's what it'll – that's, that's the only thing I can see. There's, you know, the tech companies that are coming in are in Fayetteville and Conway. Mm -hmm. That may be why Conway's booming. What was in Little Rock, I'm not even sure is there anymore. Um, but they are building a, a big Amazon distribution in Little Rock. That's That's the new thing now is yeah. the amazon distribution uh there so that's probably the only new big business that i'm aware of just not around here schools are awful you know yeah uh, schools are awful a lot of them have been taking taken over by the state because the grades were so bad and so poor and uh, that's an awful indicator of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, they pay teachers poorly in your state, like they do in some other states. I, yeah, yeah, it's it's not not too good. I think they, I don't know about. I think they start out at about thirty thousand a year, something like that. Mm -hmm. How how does thirty thousand go in an Arkansas cost of living? Is that like middle class, barely well, you, making it? You're not going to rent anything if you're renting. Uh, you're not going to rent anything for decent to live in for less than seven or eight hundred dollars a month. Uh, anything under that and. You, yeah. you know, it's just in, in areas that you really don't want to be. And a lot of rents, even more than that, um, rent high, it wages low. Um, I think there's a lot of people that would say 800 or even a thousand dollars is yeah a steal. Yeah. I mean, but, and you know, you, things have changed for this country in the last year. A lot of people are realizing they don't want to be in the big cities. They want to move somewhere that's more rural where they can work from home and raise a family with lots of land and space. Absolutely. And they're, they're headed to the South. I mean, they are headed to Tennessee. They're going down South Carolina, North Carolina. They're mm -hmm. coming in. They're trickling into places like where you guys are at. Um, well, if, if anybody loves, you know, we're the natural state. If anybody loves the, the outdoor life of of the the hiking, the camping, the the uh, boating, the canoeing, uh, beautiful uh, canoeing on the Buffalo River up in in northern Arkansas, uh, Ozark National Forest, the camping trails, uh, you know, the fishing, the hunting, uh, all of that is is awesome it's it's wonderful and uh if if that's the kind of lifestyle uh yes we've got plenty of that um 
but uh, the and she planned not so much, you know. But she not she twice planned retire maybe. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the, the people want cheap. They want space. They want yeah, they want land, and, and not cheap meaning bottom bottom dollar stuff. But I mean, if if you were going to try to buy a half an acre with a you know. 2,800 square foot home where your kids could run around. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in very many places except for down in the South part of the country or, you know, out in the middle mm -hmm. of nowhere. But, um, you know, there's not a yeah. lot of places where you got mountains that you can do that. I don't even know in this area, there's hardly even any houses that large. I mean, my house is a, a three, two, and it's only 1,700 square mm. feet. Uh, and it's pretty, pretty average, you know, uh, nothing, nothing fancy, not a fancy neighborhood. It is out of the city limits a little ways, um, nice, quiet, little cul-de-sac type neighborhood. And, uh, but the houses outside of town are decidedly more expensive than the ones in town. The ones in town you can get for a song, but they're awful. They look like they look like crack houses. What can I say? Uh, I guess they are. I don't know. They've sat vacant. They've had uh, people squatting in them. Uh, they're they're just bad, just bad. And uh, neighborhoods are, are littered with it. It's not just um, not just the poor neighborhoods that are like that because some I men will move into a nicer neighborhood and then they're gone and that house just sits there and deteriorates and it brings down the whole neighborhood. So yeah. that's why people have moved out and scatter the countryside but you can't you can't get land inexpensive like you could at one time now if you can find land for forty five hundred an acre you'd probably be lucky just to put a little house on it or something you know uh, it's been you know, bought up by the powers that be. Hmm. So before I let you go, you did mention you had some, there was all kinds of stories about the Clintons and Arkansas and Oh Lordy, there's so many stories and I don't know if they're true. Is there one that you can share with people that um, as an example of that? Uh, it's mostly stories about parties and things like that and goings on. And I ain't saying nothing else because I value my life. <laughs> <laughs> if your phone starts ringing again, I'm going to be a little worried for you. <laughs> I turned it off. <laughs> okay. I turned it off. I'm sorry. I didn't do that before. <laughs> no, it's fine. But, uh, yeah. It's, it's some pretty, pretty bizarre stories that have floated around and I've I've like no way that can be true but I've had people I swear you know so who knows and this is coming from um some of the state troopers that were assigned at one time and things like that so I guess we'll just have to use our imagination yes no. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for that. That was really insightful. And, you know, I just wish they had people with big hearts like you a lot more in your area because I feel like that could go a long way and just keep yeah. sharing that love and that wisdom. And maybe you can help turn it around a little bit at a time. If you're yeah. Uh, you know, it's like. Some of these smart kids just need to come back home instead of being enticed by 
big businesses and big cities and flashy places and bring it on home. Remember yeah. where they came from. Remember their raising. Come back home to Arkansas if you're watching. That's it. Come back to Arkansas. Come on back. They need you. We, hey, we have sweet tan cornbread. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you probably miss the fireworks and blowing up stuff and the mudding and the shooting and the hollering. <laughs> I've done my share of that along the way. I've, I've sat in many a deer stand and, and tromped through the woods with a little flashlight. Things like that. Yeah, I, I, everybody hunts here. And, of course, uh, everybody's a card-carrying Razorback fan. Um, go Hogs. I, that's mandatory. I say that somewhere along can, the way. Can you do your um, suey pig thing that they do down there? Huh? The, 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 the noise, the, the, the pig yell that they do oh, at the, the game? Oh, the suey, yeah. Yeah, can you can you do that or can oh, you do please. it for us? You're really big <laughs> <Ooh>, Razorbacks. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of loses its flair when there's only one person doing it. When you when you're in an office with uh yeah, some phones yeah. ringing, it's not the same as when it's you're like, at the game or the tailgate. All this stuff behind me, I look like I've got things growing out of my head. I will. <laughs> but uh uh, like I said, I live in rural area. I don't get any service. I don't even have Wi-Fi or anything available to me. That's how far down I am. <laughs> so that's you the price you pay Wi-Fi? right now for uh, living out in the in in the country in Arkansas. Is you don't have things like Wi-Fi and broadband and things like that. So you're still on dial-up internet at home. I don't have any internet at home. You don't have internet at your house? Nope. Mm -mm. How far out of the city limits are you? About seven miles. And there's no internet? Mm -mm. So, no. Um, because they I won't mean, weigh it. There's some that's available, but you have to get cable service. I've tried to yeah. get it through at and I can't get it. HughesNet is sketchy. Uh, Verizon said we don't service your area. So here you go. So all I have is my phone, and I get very, very poor signal until about 10 or 10.30 at night. And... Mm until about 6 30 or 7 the next morning uh i can barely get a text or a phone call <laughs> do you like being isolated though i mean is there something that's peaceful about no distractions or are you like hell i no, guess i'm right? used to it um you know my kids know that if they um call and don't get me that my service is sketchy and they can keep trying or they can drive to my house. <laughs> and that's about it because uh, we don't go out much after dark. Not into town anyway. Oh, oh I, um, they need to fix that problem. Hey, HughesNet or not a HughesNet. Charter, AT and T, get a line out to these people. Yeah, we have uh, what is it? Um, cable, cable links or something is down there, and some of the neighbors have said, "Oh yeah, I get it, it's great." And then the one across the street will roll their eyes and say, "Don't waste your money." So mm -hmm. I've never even attempted. I don't even, you know, that's one more contract to me to stay out of. Mm-hmm. We just go home and do our thing. Yeah. Like we used to do before internet. That's right. Life goes on. Mm -hmm. we, we're not tied to it. So that's great. That's great. My grandkids come. My, my three-year-old grandson says he wasn't coming back to my house because we don't have Wi-Fi. What? My, my three-year-old grandson told me that. <laughs> 
just laughed and I said, you are spoiled rot. <laughs> no, he needs to come over and get a shovel and go out back and start playing with rocks and picking up sticks and playing <laughs> with bugs. We, and We take him out and he swings and plays with the dogs and uh, grandma spends a lot of time reading books to him. So that's what we do. And it works. Works for us. So, uh, Pine Bluff will never be the same little place it was, but I can only hope it doesn't get any worse. That's my hope. That's my hope. Well, you hang in there and uh, wish you the best, and I hope that Pine Bluff also doesn't get worse. Yes, that's 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 what I'm saying. I hope it doesn't get any worse because it's sad. sad. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Do I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're sad. That that makes me sad that you're sad. Well, don't be, you know, it's okay. It just, um, it's like I said, Pine Bluff gets a bad rap and people don't know how it used to be. It used to be a really nice place. It was a nice place. It just, I uh, went to heck in a handbasket and uh, I don't know if there's any saving it. But, uh, sorry <laughs> oh you're okay does, does it make you sadder when people like me say point out that pine bluff is bad like there's a part in the video that i am almost done where i'm like pine bluff is just not a good place anymore i mean is that break your heart does it make you sadder does it should um, i leave that out i feel it, bad it now. doesn't make me sadder because you know i, I know it's true and that's what makes me sad because I know it's true and I guess there were those of us that watched it get that way and didn't do anything and didn't do enough. And now that I'm at a retirement age, I don't feel that I have the the want to that I once did or the you know you get to a place where you're just like I'm over it you know move on I'm over it but it it doesn't it doesn't make it any better that that it was a nice place it was a booming place we had the you know the port and businesses and people came from all the little towns to Pine Bluff to shop, you know, uh, because it, it was on the way to Little Rock. So everything, everybody on the south half of Arkansas came here. Doesn't happen anymore. Doesn't happen. There's, there's no place for them. And, uh, you know, Got lots of pawn shops, lots of liquor stores, lots Wait. of ethnic restaurants, uh, and lots of churches. And uh, lots of lots of sad people without jobs. And lots of people that don't care whether they have a job or not. You know, people that want a job want a better job and they're not happy with what's offered to them and so they pick up their toys and go. And uh, some of us old timers just keep sticking around. Well, you hang in there, old timer. <laughs> yep. I'll be here a while. 
I don't know where I'll, I, I don't know if I'll stay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get aggravated and say, I am not staying here. Uh, not going to be a prisoner in my house after dark, you know, and things like that. But then here I see it, you know, I've been here all these years and, uh, um, really don't have any plans right now to go anywhere. So, um, well, you, you're doing God's work, doing what you're doing with those folks you're helping out and, you know, hopefully those young minds will pay a little bit of attention Yep, y'all come on back. Come on back. We're here. We're here for you, and we've got there's adults that'll stand behind you and, and prop you up along the way. There are those of us here that still have encouraging words, and there are those of us here that are not going to say there's nothing here for you. Because even when I moved back to Pine Bluff uh, uh, to help my mom, some uh, there were people say, Why are you coming back here? There's nothing here. You know, and that's the attitude everybody has taken. There's nothing here. It's sad there's nothing here. Who's going to bring it back? If we don't, no one will. I wish I had an answer. So, don't you have a magic wand in your, in your bag of tricks somewhere? I can just draw attention to it and hopefully somebody will care yeah yeah that's i don't know what else it would take 